Hi, I'm Guy Lawrence and you are listening to the Guy Lawrence podcast. If you're enjoying this content and you want to find out more and join me and come further down the rabbit hole, make sure you head back to guylawrence.com.au. Awesome guys, enjoy the show. Dave, mate, welcome to the show. Guy, thanks for, thanks for having me. Looking, nice. for, looking forward to this. Yeah, I was going to say almost welcome back, but this is a brand new podcast. And uh, that's what makes it uh, more exciting, mate. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thanks, man. And because um, you did, I remember mentioning on the, the 181, for anyone that listening to this used to listen to the 180 Nutrition podcast, or still does, hopefully, as well. But you appeared three times on there and made the wall of fame, mate. I was wondering, like, from that exposure, were you getting like people stopping you on the street in Melbourne going, oh my God, it's <laughs> No, no, no celebrity status, mate. So, uh, but look, yeah, it's, it was, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's helped sort of spread the message that I'm trying to spread. Um, and you know, I guess it's exposed sort of fifth element to, uh, even people abroad. Like we get a lot of people con- contacting us from New Zealand. And I think we actually even had someone the other day from Serbia, believe it or not. So wow. it's, uh, yeah, and that, and that's all as a result of uh, 180 Nutrition and the, and the podcast. So, um, yeah, it was a great experience. And <laughs> you yeah. just never know who's listening. <laughs> it is amazing, actually. I I I've, I love it, and uh, that's why you know even after stepping down from 180, I was very keen to continue and start a new podcast and and just see where this one takes me. This journey, you know, it was an amazing four and a half years as a 180 podcast, but now as a Guy Lawrence podcast, you know, I've already had some really interesting guests on. Well, well, well I'm sure the big names are going to just continue uh, constantly, mate. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. I hope so, mate. I got one today. That's what I'll, I'll tell everyone. That's for sure. <laughs> so, mate, <laughs> so a quick, um, what's your elevator pitch, mate? Like just for people tuning in for the first time for you and why I'm keen to get you on the podcast. Like yep. you say, Stranger stops you on the street. You got two minutes. What do you do for a living? What do you say? Um, it's, it is. It's a great question. Um, look, look up. I guess what what I sort of do is I actually help people um, achieve the best versions of themselves. Um, and the means that I use to to do that, you know, I've got many many different tools in the toolkit. Uh, and so I don't believe in a, I don't believe in a monotherapy. Um, I think there's many different, um, you know, different aspects that we can use to improve our overall health. Um, and I really base that on the individual. So what's best for that individual at that, in in that particular time, uh, in those circumstances. And I might use many different tools to enable them to, to to yeah. to get that end result to achieve the best version of themselves. What, what would be the typical vehicles if you can kind of summarize the broad version of it to, to help people? Yeah, look, um, yeah, look, nutrition, um, but it's it's quite like without me going too far down the rabbit hole with that. That's you know, it's it's there's so many different aspects. You know, you talk about like you know high fats, you know, vegetarian, vegan. Okay, really. Really, it really just depends depends on the individual and what's yeah. going to be best for them at that time to help them achieve what they want to achieve. But I might use like physical stresses, and what I mean by physical stresses is like training. So training is a physical stress. Um, things like cold therapy, heat therapy, um, and and then there's you know gravitating people more towards things that help with the parasympathetic nervous system, like one of your favorites, like metacognition, meditation. Um, you know, breathing techniques and all different types of breathing techniques. Once again, that just depends on the individual. Totally. Um, yeah. So, I mean, you know, and even, and even, and even more tools like movement training, spinal articulation, uh, things that are good for cognitive health, like juggling and problem solving and all these types of things. I mean, it, it's, it's really very what we like to use and, yeah, and that really just depends on the, on the person. Totally. It's pretty amazing. And, and you're getting some pretty amazing results. You know, anyone that follows the protocols and does what they told basically. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, what it, that's what it comes down to. Like yeah. anything, I mean, if, if people follow the protocols and they're willing to put in the, the, the hard work and they're willing to continue, you know, it becomes routine and it becomes part of their life, then they're going to get amazing results. And that's, yeah. 
definitely what we've found for sure. Yeah, totally. No, it's, it's, it's amazing. And now I, we, um, I wanted to get you on the podcast today so we could talk about a couple of things in, in particular that we're pretty excited about. And, um, and essentially, just to let everyone know, because we wanted to be able to promote that we're actually uh, running an experience, a trip to Sardinia in September 2018. But we wanted to make the podcast educational, not just to be able to promote what we're doing. And, uh, and we've kind of... Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we're putting it into what we call five lessons from Sardinia and the Blue Zones, which effectively mm-hmm. are probably the healthiest and happiest people on the planet you know yes yeah i mean like you know like uh we've got like i know there's you know there's five major blue zones in the in the in the world and and obviously sardinia is one of those you've got okinawa in japan you've got nicoya in in costa rica and you've got the sort of southern part of uh california and and then you've got icaria in greece and obviously we've chosen sardinia um, and, and, you know, and for listeners, it's, it's not necessarily the only place that we're going to, to visit, but it's the, it's the place that we've decided first. And I was talking to a guy, uh, previously about some of the stats that come up with Sardinia and they're pretty phenomenal. Um, and like out of, uh, a hundred thousand people, um, it's like 22 of those, um, will actually reach over a hundred. And when we, when we say over a hundred, I mean, these people who are still active, they're still part of the community. Most of the time, you know, um, even working the, the land to some extent, they're not on medication, they're not on uh, tubes, they're not on life support, all these types of things. So, you know, 22 out of uh, uh, every 100,000 people. And I think if you look at um, other countries around the world, I think it's somewhere in the realms of about eight out of 100,000. Yeah, just double. How, how uh, would you... So, yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. How would you, like, just in case listeners are not familiar what a blue zone is, because I do, when I mention it, we're, we're doing an organized trip to a blue zone. I normally get, what's a blue zone? So how would you summarize it quickly? Look, I think that probably one of the best ways to summarize it is, is obviously they've got a high, uh, high amount of centenarians. So what we mean by that is people who live to over 100, but then it comes down to the quality of their life. Yeah, okay, because in Australia, we'd have many people who'd live over over a hundred, but we have to, we have to take into account also that a lot of these people are living on lots of medication that they're, they're not able to walk around. They're not, they're not able to be part of the community and so forth. So it also, it comes down to their quality of life. Um, and so that, and also they don't get things like, uh, autoimmune diseases and, and cancers. And, and so they, they don't get a lot of these types of diseases, which obviously in Western society, we're just sort of riddled with now. Um, so that's, that's pretty much what I would describe a, like a blue zone, just the quality of their life, their strong community bonds and the, and the quality of their lifestyle. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. And I, I've said that word amazing three or four times. I've got to, I've got to correct my grammar as I go, but uh, (laughs) yeah, I had the fortune of interviewing Dan Butner, the founder of the blue zones just before Christmas. Yeah. um, Yeah. And he just came up with a new book called the blue zones of happiness. So I want to stress to everyone listening to the show as well that the, 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 the happiness within these areas, they, they actually did a study for years and it's, it correlates directly with the, with the blue zones, which is quite amazing. Yeah. So you officially say they are the happiest people on the planet as well. You know? Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I think always a little bit of uh, the thing for me when I first started maybe even researching into blue zones and so forth is that everyone was just sort of focusing on their nutrition, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, and saying, okay, well they eat this and, you know, in, in, in Icaria, they, they, they tend to have a quite a high amount of vegetables in their diet. And, um, but the, the, the reality is that their nutrition is, is very different from one area to the next. Um, and the, the, the area that really they all have in common is, as you said, they're, they're, they're strong community ties. Um, and you look at like, you look at the elderly people and, and we've spoken about this already. Um, but the elderly people in these, in, in these communities like Sardinia, they actually spend time with young people. Yeah. They, they're, they're spending time with their, uh, with children. They're spending times with, uh, with their grandchildren and even their great grandchildren. So they're just surrounded by youth and there's nothing to make you feel more youthful than being surrounded, surrounded by young people totally. you know what i mean and yeah. unfortunately in western society elderly people 
generally are surrounded by who? Yeah. Uh, elderly people. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, and that's their reality. Yeah. And I, I want to mention yeah. that community was number one of the five life lessons. Yes. And I think what correlations do you think there are between community in that kind of area, like the things we're touching on compared to the way we are living our life in the Western culture? Yeah, well, the, the, some of the things I know definitely with Sardinia is that uh, a, lot of the, um, a lot of the people, um, they work quite late into their, into their elderly years. Uh, most of them working up till they're like 80 plus. Okay. Um, and also from a profession perspective, most of the, most of them are like farmers and they're shepherds. And so they're, they're working in a very, very strong community sort of uh, base where they're, and they're working on the land and they're producing their own food and all. And we'll get to the food thing a little bit later, but they're, yeah, they're strong community ties. Like they're eating together and, and, and let's say they had to, you know, it's, it's part of life that they had to slaughter like a lamb yeah. They put the lamb on the spits and then they celebrate this. It's a celebration of food and they're celebrating this together. Um, and then I'd say that because they have these, you know, we might meet up with our family and so forth, maybe once a, a month. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes even longer for some people. And because they're having these strong community bonds daily, that means they're going to do things. They're, they're going to laugh a lot. Yeah. Okay. And the one thing I can tell you, like laughter, I mean, you produce a lot of things like, uh, endorphins when you laugh okay there's actually science to say that that also laughter will actually increase uh the the quality of things like your t-cells so to do with your lymphocytes so in turn actually helping with uh your immune system i know that it can actually um have a positive effect on a on a cytokine uh called uh inter interferon gamma and that actually i know that sounds confusing but that actually helps with things like our immune system and our and our lymphocytes and our and our ability to to fight off disease and so forth and i know i'm sort of getting off the off the beating track of here a little bit but it just shows like they, they're going to laugh a lot more because they're constantly in these community-based okay. environments and they're engaging with people all the time so i, I think that's really and i'm only picking on one aspect because at the end of the day when you're in those community bonds as well what do you also tend to do you tend to hug They'll be hugging yeah. everyone, okay? And we know that like when you're hugging constantly that you release a lot of anti-stress hormones like oxytocin and so forth. Um, and so I, look, I think that's, that's super it's powerful. Massive. I, you know it's a couple I mean? of other things that spring to mind as well is that you, if you've got problems, if there's things that you've got concerns of, you can go and talk to people and express Correct. those emotions as well. I think yeah. also if you're a bit out of line, <laughs> You've got a community that sort of, you know, bring you back in, you know, without getting yeah, yeah. too astray. Like, and yeah, yeah. they're crucial. They're, yeah. they're, they're, they're crucial aspects, you know. When you, when you yeah. think about the amount of time people are spending on social media and getting their kind of, I don't know, fix is not the right word, but um, their they significance, if you like, their social significance through an internet and spending that time, you know, things psychologically have to break down over time. You know? Yeah, yeah. Look, look for sure. I mean, I mean, I think there's there's obviously amazing elements of social media and so forth, and I'm never going to dispute that. But I mean, yeah, it has taken us further and further away from those community bonds. You know, like I know at Fifth Element, and and I know with you know with Let It In and so forth, like we're really promoting those getting back those strong community bonds, mm. so that we're doing things like. Uh, like proactive things for our body as well. I'm not talking about going down the pub and like getting off your head. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about, you know, getting together and, and training together, moving together and breathing together and meditating together, doing those in, in, uh, in community environments. And just imagine, I've, I think I've said this before in one of your, one of my, one of the previous podcasts is that if you're doing well, like we know that, benefits of these things by themselves but then add a community element to that it's incredible and we we're like you we've experienced that ourselves like doing community breathing you can feel a, a more positive impact on your body than if you do the breathing by yourself okay yeah. and that's the same thing with eating that's the same thing with moving it's the same thing yeah okay there there is definitely a higher biochemical reaction on the body 
when we're doing these things uh, totally. together. Totally. And that, that's the one thing that excites me a lot about our Sardinia trip is because, A, this, you know, we've got 24 spaces all up. I think half of them are gone. But it's, it's bringing a sense of community. It's bringing people together that are like-minded, that I want to explore these things and get joy from that. Yeah, it, look, it's one, one of the, the most important elements for us when we, when we talked about doing this was, yeah, just getting like-minded people together um, and getting us to immerse into like experiencing those, those strong community bonds for ourselves, but also forming our own strong community bond as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and like those two things together, I think, yeah, it's, it's just going to be super powerful for anyone who really, you know, wants to experience something completely different to any other sort of holiday that you've experienced before because yeah. you're definitely going to come back a, a, a different person and you're going to come back. It's going to change your biochemistry and, and you're going to like, you're going to actually feel revitalized and rejuvenated and more proactive. That's totally. for sure. You know, I'm, one of the life lessons I was given long, long time ago, 10, 12 years ago, before I kind of started out even on the 180 journey was to look at the people I was associating most of my time with you know, from what I was doing and to look at if they were actually encouraging me, uplifting me, or were they actually holding me back, you know? And it was really tough to, to get honest about it as well, but it, it was definitely an element um, in that that I, I started to look at over the years and, and you know, because I wanted and started to put myself around with people that were going to aspire me and, and make me raise my game and, raise, and look at life differently. Um, and get out of that comfort yeah. a bit. Yeah, hundred percent. I've been through that same sort of stage in my life as well. And you know, I'm never going to take any anything away from people that have been important to me, like in my like totally. previously in my life. And um, it all serves a purpose, and um, it all makes you a better person. But then you do get to a point where you need to be surrounded by people who are going to help you. Um, uh, encourage you to uh, to achieve the things that you want to achieve and then be surrounded by people who are like-minded um, and are willing to challenge themselves and and once again like you know become a way better version of of what they what they currently are I mean that's yeah. what a you know that everyone gets to that crossroads where they they think am I really getting the most out of my body am I really getting the most out of out of myself and you have to be surrounded by people who are going to help you uh, achieve that. Totally. That's the one thing. Yeah. That's one thing I know for sure. Yeah, yeah, massively. All right. I reckon let's move on to number two of the five okay. that we picked. And that is yep. a sense of purpose. Yes. Why, why, why do you think a sense of purpose is? Um, yeah, look, I think what, if we're just going to relate this to the blue zone areas, mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll relate this to Sardinia, obviously. Um, I think this sense of purpose really comes down to maybe something I already touched on a little bit. Um, and in the elderly populations, because I mean, end of the day when we're, when we're in Sardinia, we are going to spend time with the centenarians, which I'm really, really excited about. I know you are, and I know the people have already booked. It's actually one of the, the, the main driving reasons to why they, they sort of wanted to, to, to experience this, to actually speak to these people and understand their, their, um, you know, their traits and um, their experiences and all these types of things. But the one thing I know from what I've, what I've read and so forth is a lot of Sardinians, they, they have very, very uh, um, strong family bonds. Um, and so a lot of them, like remember, remember me mentioning about them having like great grandchildren and so yes. forth. And I, I know when, when we did a, a course and we did a seminar with Greg Braden, and Greg Braden brought out, brought up, uh, images of people who'd lived to you know extreme ages you know i think in some realms like you know 120 130 years old and so forth and actually a lot of them put down to why they lived that long is family who they were surrounded by that but they're surrounded by their great great grandchildren and that gave them purpose to keep on they 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 felt valued yes yeah value. they felt that's yeah they felt valued within the community. Yeah. Okay. They don't, they don't feel like they're a burden. You know, unfortunately I would, I would dispute this in Western society. Like I, I, I would think that a lot of elderly people would feel like they're a burden on society. 
Uh, and you might argue that us sending them to somewhere where we don't spend a lot of time with them and so forth might make them feel like that. Yeah. yeah okay. It's just but, culturally you know, different, isn't it? It's it's culturally different. Yeah, hundred percent. But 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 they would definitely feel like I have purpose. My purpose is to look after the family and a role model and share my experiences and and and. That is like having that purpose when you're educating other people, like I know from my own experience, when you're, when you're passing on information and so forth, that strives you to just keep on going and going. And I, I think that that would be really prominent in a culture like the Sardinian culture for sure. Yeah, massive. And, and if I'm not mistaken, everyone within the family has a role during the day as well like that one person might be going to get the vegetables and bring it back for the family the other person might be cooking or laboring in the garden there's a role no matter what age group you're yeah. in is that involved yeah 100% and then and, and, and yeah. that's and that's proven in the age that they worked they they worked till yeah okay because they've got to work on the land because if they don't work on the land they're not going to have food and they're not going to provide for the family and so forth so I mean, that's going to that, that's gonna drive them to get up every single morning and go, well, I have to go work on the land. And, you know, like, you, you know, sometimes in Western culture, when people retire and, you know, most people might retire around 65, 70 in Australia, then all of a sudden they've lost a lot of that purpose of, you know, what, they, what they've got to wake up for every single morning. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Where oh. they, don't lose, they don't lose that in a community like Sardinia. They've still got to wake up and they've still got to do a lot of the same, as you, as you said, a lot of the same chores, chores and the same tasks and so forth uh, every single day. It's crucial. And I think it's a valuable lesson for us all in where are we currently at without, where, you know, because we spend most of our time at work, right? And yeah. Well, what they say is something like uh, out of your, your lifespan, you're going to spend um, what's the realms of what, 50, 50 odd years, yeah, like working. Yeah. Exactly. And, and, and if you're not on purpose, like if you don't yeah. feel like you, you're con- contributing and getting lit up inside every day with what you do, that's going to affect your longevity and health. There's just no way around it. I mean, I was that person for years you know, at one stage in my life and the difference in how I am and how I feel. And I think it's definitely something we should all look up more, even though it can be scary, you know, changing security and finances and everything else that comes with it. But it's uh, definitely a lesson for sure. Yeah, yeah. And like even, you know, even just from, a, you know, you know, I'm, I'm analytical and I like to, to bring out my sort of numbers and so forth. But yeah. just for the listeners, just to understand is that, that community, like feeling, feeling part of something and having that purpose and so forth, we know that actually has this massive positive effect on a, a protein in the body called brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which a lot of people talk about. Yeah, yeah. okay. And that's the key to helping with uh, new neurons in the brain, helping to repair synapses. So it's going to help with neurotransmitter uptake and it's going to help with your mood and your behavior and so forth. And we know, and we know um, you know, uh, in people who've got like Alzheimer's and depression and schizophrenia and so forth, well, they have low levels of BDNF and community is one of the, uh, is one of the highest, um, uh, highest aspects for enabling us to produce more BDNF. You know, so um, once again, just, you know, that just reiterates that whole thing of them feeling bit, part of that community and having that purpose. One thing I'll touch on as well, I'm not sure if they do it in Sardinia, but I know they do it in Icaria, the other blue zone, which is they set like the older you get, the more respected you are within the community. It's not the other way around. Like it tends to be here. And when they reach 100 years old, they actually parade them down the street and have a carnival. And it's a huge celebration. I mean, that's That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. amazing it's, you know it, uh, yeah it's amazing it, 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 somewhere along the line there definitely has been a, a, a shift um you know that has taken place in in western society where we are uh we're not celebrating um you know people reaching these milestones and their and their wealth of knowledge and uh what they can pass down and their uh their keys to their longevity and so forth and 
I think that's why we're so interested in experiencing these blue zone areas. Yeah, totally, totally. Um, number three, let's move on to number three that we've got yep. bitten down, which is nutrition. You know, we've, yes. we've kind of covered it. We, we don't have to go into too, too deep. But what, yeah. what are the, I guess, aspects of nutrition from the blue zones that you like, even though all the diets are varied? Yeah, I mean, yeah, we sort of, we sort of talked about it. And, you know, I, and like I do have some different sort of concepts and ideas when it comes to nutrition and so forth. But um, they, they do have a very varied diet. Do you know what I mean? Like in terms of, you know, in, I already spoke about it, but Icaria, they, they have a majority of their nutrition comes down to vegetables and so mm -hmm. forth. Um, but when we go to Sardinia, actually anywhere from, I think it's 89 to 92% of Sardinians uh, they will consume dairy uh, daily, okay? yeah. and that's men and women. Okay, and so if you actually look at it, dairy is something that's sort of been condemned and um, you're ridiculed to some extent. And all, at the end of the day, it comes down to quality, doesn't it? I was going to say, I was going to say, oh, well, let's make something clear: the dairy that you're going to get in Sardinia is not like walking into local coals here, right? Exactly. And like when I talk about dairy, because I am a, a I am definitely pro dairy because of a lot of the, the nutrients that it actually helps to increase like immunoglobulin. So it helps with your immune system. It helps with these things called glucoslingolipids, which can help with gastrointestinal infections and so forth. So that, there are a lot of benefits. And obviously when you get a, a culture like Sardinia who consume this daily, you can see how they are getting a lot of these benefits because they're getting it from, um, you know, like sheep's milk, uh, they're deriving it straight from the source. It's there on the land. They're and literally that means walking out of the house and getting it. Hundred percent, and that means that the, the 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 density of the nutrition within that is going to be higher as well. So it's going to have higher amounts of calcium, higher amounts of phosphorus, higher amounts of zinc, selenium, and actually, believe it or not, you know, sheep's uh, sheep's milk and uh, and and so forth, actually very, very high in omega-3 fatty acids as well. Yeah, okay. So it's just the quality of what they're consuming. And, and, and guess what? They, they do eat some breads. And I, I have a, a pretty strong stance when it comes to wheat. But at the end of the day, it comes down to the to, – I'm not – like I'm talking more about the Frankenstein sort of seeds that we consume in Western society where they have a particular flat bread that they consume that is actually very low in gluten. Yeah, okay, and they consume more sour, uh, sourdough as well. And sourdough is very, very high in lactobacillus. So it's very, very good for gastrointestinal health and so forth. So once again, just, uh, just another example of, yeah. of just quality. Yeah, okay, and, and wine. Yeah, and we're going to experience wine when we go to... We're definitely going to be experience a glass of wine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they consume, uh, the stats that I was reading, especially the men, would consume up to three small glasses of wine in a day um, and it's not this ridiculous consumption that we do in western society it's a small glass they're doing it most likely for for social reasons and just catching up with friends but also for a lot of the the, the nutrients that they get out of the good quality wine there was one of my mentors who said to me a long time ago said that sardinian wine was the was the cleanest wine in the world and from all the research yeah from all the the research that i've that I've read, 100%. That's the truth. It's actually two to three times higher in flavonoids, and flavonoids are very, very powerful antioxidants than other wines around the world. That's incredible, yeah. uh, and so very, very powerful antioxidants. So that's going to help with their longevity for Massively. sure. Massively. And the other thing, and I and I and I was chatting to you about this a couple of weeks yeah. back about the, my experience in Costa Rica because um, I had. I like I, I let my hair down in Costa Rica and I, I went wild and I had about four four glasses of red wine one night, right? <laughs> like out of control. For somebody that doesn't drink. But interestingly Well Joe Dispenza he doesn't mind a glass of glass of wine now and then. He doesn't mind a glass of red wine now and then. But the the interesting thing was was that because I was in a joyful state and I was celebrating and I was just in a happy place. It was great. I wasn't stressing. I could tell my nervous system was in the right place. And I woke up the next day. I was a bit tired, but I had no hangover. But yet, when I was chatting to you about this, 
you know, we quite often drink alcohol to relieve our stresses and we're in a very different state of mind. And I think that has to contribute to the Sardinians, right? The, the, yeah, hundred percent. It's the quality and we know poor quality alcohol. It's, it's going to be really detrimental to so many vitamins and minerals and it's, it's going to have a real negative effect on your absorption in your digestive system as well. But, you know, good quality alcohol in small amounts, there, there, there is evidence and the, and, and the Sardinians would be an example of this where it can actually help with some longevity uh, factors yeah. for different cultures. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's... You know, I don't want people to think that that means you can drink three glasses of wine a day within Australia, okay. because once again, it just comes down to that, to that quality. Um, and that's why, you know, Sardinian wine has become such a, uh, it is actually quite renowned for being just the highest grade that you can possibly get. As well. Massively. And the other thing, just to put something on that comment is you've got to ask yourself, why do you need the three glasses of wine anyway? If you're having it every night here. Like, are, exactly. you, are you drinking it because you've had such a stressful day, you know, with the kids or whatever it is, and you're like, oh, I'm unwinding. That's a very different state to be in, to be in. I'm completely relaxed. I'm happy. I'm completely content. And I'm yeah. celebrating and with my friend. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, 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 the environment is, is, a, is a big factor to, to what impact um, something like alcohol is going to have on your internal state. Like Absolutely. Sure. And I, I just want to touch on the trip as well, that we will be um, spending a day with a centenarian going out, getting goat's milk and making goat's cheese. In one yes, of 100%. So we'll, we will experience a lot of these traditional foods that they... Totally. Yeah, I know, I know also with the, the Sardinians, they actually have milk thistle. And I know a lot of listeners would have heard of milk thistle before as well, but they have milk thistle daily as well. So it's just little things like they do. And, um, and, and they've kept a lot of these traditional, um, these traditional uh, sort of concepts and these traditional things within their, their even, you know, today's lifestyle. Um, and so, you know, milk thistle is great for it for liver detoxification and powerful antioxidants and all these types of things. So it's just some of these little things that they do. And they, and, and once again, it comes down to routine as well, because they're doing them daily as yeah. well. Yeah. yeah. It's not something they just do for a phase and then they stop it and all these types of things. So it's just these regular things. And then they get the, they, you know, if you're doing these things regularly, then you get the benefits. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Yeah. So I've got for number four out of the life lessons from Sardinia and the Blues. Yep. I haven't actually got written um, any time fitness gym three times a week. Um, <laughs> that's going to disappoint a lot of people. I've got, move, <laughs> I've got movement written down though. Yes. Well, it's, uh, it's an interesting one for me um, because obviously my background is I do like to train hard. I do like to push the, the boundaries. A lot mm -hmm. of the people I've dealt with in the past do like to push the boundaries and, you know, and the thing is like um, a little bit of my argument has always been is Olympic lifting and, you know, training for sports and, and, and so forth. You know, we're doing that for a purpose and the purpose is like an end goal. And that end goal is to be the best or to, you know, to be the best. Culture. Absolutely. And that's part of that yeah. culture. And, but our association has been, well, if, you, if you're the best, and that means you're incredibly healthy and you're inc incredibly fit. And my argument has been, well, that's most likely not true. Okay? Um, because just because you're really good at running marathons does not mean you're fit and healthy. You know, I, I can tell you many people that I know that are good at running marathons and they have numerous health complications and numerous health issues and uh, the same in, you know, if they're good at football, if they're good at rugby, okay, just because they're good at a sport doesn't mean they're, they're, they're fit and healthy. Yeah, yeah okay. Uh, the one thing that we, that we know that's quite common with people uh, who live in blue zone areas uh, and Sardinia is that they, they, te they tend to just be extremely active. Um, but it doesn't mean that they're doing Olympic weightlifting. It doesn't mean that they're, you know, carrying like a, a 200 kilo um horse and cart or anything like that. They've got their heart rate monitor on. Checking. Yeah, man, yeah. They're not they know they're not necessarily pushing the boundaries of 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 the physical realm. But they do move regularly. 
Yeah, okay. Um, and that's why, you know, we've spoken about before and that's why I'm so big on movement training and spinal articulation and body weight stuff because that would be an example. These people are just, they're working on the land. They're, they're moving all day long, encouraging good circulation, encouraging, um, you know, the, those movement patterns would be different from day to day because it's not always going to be the same repetitive yeah. thing all, all, all the time. And so this challenges them from a cognitive perspective as well, creating new neural, new neural patterns in the body and so forth. So um, it's, it's definitely different, yeah, okay, um, because, they're, they're, as I said, they're not pushing the boundaries from that perspective. Yeah, totally. But I think as well, the one thing that we want to achieve when we do this trip and what we achieve on the podcast and everything is to be able to take those lessons and be able to sort of in bed them into our Western lifestyle. Cause obviously we don't 100%. live in Southern, yeah. You know? Yeah. But, uh, and then that's a, that's a big thing for me, guys. I've always said we, we need to live and we need to eat according to our environment. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And you know, for me, Sardinians, they're living and they're eating according to the environment that, that they live in. I've spoken about the, the, the Inuits who I'm, I was always really fascinated with and, and they ate according to the environment. Their environment was incredibly harsh. It was incredibly unforgiving. And guess what? They needed to, they needed to consume a lot of uh, things like animal fats and animal proteins, like 95% of their diet. And guess what? They actually had one of the least incidents of cardiovascular disease until sugar and things like alcohol were introduced to their diet. So when they were eating according and living according to their environment, they were crazy healthy yeah um and it's when we've gone away from that not living and not eating according to the environment that we're living in that for me things become they they go off skew okay and this is where we start to get a lot of problems yeah totally totally i uh mate i reckon let's go on to number five (laughs) okay and uh, the the last one of the five and i've got (laughs) and and this is huge huge and i've got stress less Yes. Um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a big topic for me and, you know, something that, you know, I've experienced sort of the worst, you know, the worst realms of uh, stress-related issues. Um, you know, if you want to call it adrenal fatigue or uh, adrenal burnout, you know, I suffered it and it was, it was as, as bad as it possibly could get. Um, but uh, the one thing I know... Um, is that Sardinians, they have a less stressful lifestyle. Um, and also, they, uh, they, they, they're not necessarily uh, dictated by what's going on in things like social media. Uh, they're, they're, they're sort of sticking with their traditional realms of living and so forth. So they're less industrialized. Yeah. Uh, which means they're, they're most likely exposed to less things like pollutants and toxins and all these types of things. Um, and this, this all adds up to them having like perfect hormonal balances in their body. I mean, um, the, the one thing like I, I definitely know that one of the most important ratios in the human body, I'm going to get a little bit more technical here, no, go for it. is uh, the balance between your cortisol, which is mm-hmm. obviously the stress hormone, and DHEA, okay? And a lot of people aren't, aren't going to be familiar with that hormone, but it's a steroidal hormone as well. And I like to call it like the anti-aging hormone, okay? okay. So it helps, with, it helps with libido. It helps with fertility. It helps mitigate excitatory behavior in the brain, yeah, okay? So it helps with cognition. It helps with better sleep, okay? So it's linked to when you've got low levels of DHEA to having things like insomnia and so forth, yeah, yeah okay? Now, all those things I've just said, do you think there's significant problems in Western society? Oh, yeah. They're huge. Yeah. They're huge. And I'm telling you why. Because the, the, the balance between their cortisol and their DHEA is completely out of whack. Yeah, okay? They should, there, there's, 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 they, they should essentially, um, they, they should almost mirror each other a little bit. Yeah, okay? So if we have a little bit more DHEA, that helps that helps to mitigate some of the negative effects of cortisol. Okay. And and unfortunately, you know, in this Western society where, you know, we're exposed to long and ongoing periods of stress, like chronic stress and so forth, that means our cortisol levels 
do tend to be elevated initially yeah. initially really really elevated and then they will become where they're really really low okay and i'm talking about the the sort of uh, end byproduct of yeah. adrenal exhaustion and so forth yeah okay um, but when they're, when they're really elevated initially, then our DHEA levels tend to be out of whack and they tend to be low. Likewise, when we reach that uh, exhaustion phase, our cortisol levels and our DHEA levels are both low, okay? Which means we have no energy, we're lethargic, we're bedridden, we have no libido, uh, we have problems with fertility, poor sleep, and all these types of things. And for me, you know, if you look at some of those blue zone areas, you would find that their balance between their DHEA and their cortisol ratio would be really good. Yeah. 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 Um, and, 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 and that's why. <clears throat> I, got, I, got, I got a question yeah, for you on that then, because clearly yeah. that, that's, they're, they're really important factors. I, I totally get that. And stress yeah. is a big contributor to them, right? And our lifestyles and, you know, because a lot of the factors can be for, like nutrition can be a form of stress if you're eating wrong, right? There's stress in the body. and so 100%. And all the rest of it. So my question to you is, you're in the fire and firing line of Fifth Element Wellness. We've probably seen, what, thousands of people easily, right? Yeah. How many of yep. them come into you stressed and they don't even know they're stressed? Um, pretty much most people. There you go. Pretty much most people. Like, like most of the time, most people would say to me, but I'm not stressed. And it, 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 the, the whole thing is, and, and you, you pointed out pointed out something really good there guy is that some people don't consider or they don't really understand stress. Okay. So they, things like having sugar in their diet, having things like, uh, you know, not rotating their foods enough. So they've got food sensitivities and so forth. Well, they're all adding to like the allostatic load of that individual. And then they've got problems with family. They've got problems like psychological, uh, uh, psychological stresses, environmental stress. And when I say environmental stresses, like their surroundings, their neighborhood and all these types of things. And they, most of the time people just consider like, oh, stress only relates to my boss nagging me or yeah. my wife nagging me. Stress can be all these things that I've just talked about. And guess what? When you've got digestive stress as well, you've got bacterial issues and parasites and all that they're adding to that stress load. And um, some people just don't realize that they've got all these different types of stresses that are being piled upon them. Yeah, okay? It's and that's, and that's affecting their stress resilience as well. Yeah, okay? Yeah. Um, and, and, and that's why they, you know, they don't have energy to, to, to train and they don't have energy to do the things that they want to do and all these types of things. Um, so yeah, I mean, to answer your question, yes, most people, um, are, are coming in with stress related issues, whatever that, like, as I said, whatever that yeah. might be. Um, uh, and most of the time it's like, I have to peel it back like an onion. Um, and, and when I start peeling back all these different layers of stress and removing some of these sort of, uh, toxic, um, you know, these, these, these toxic, toxic things in their lives, then all of a sudden they start to feel more energized. They start to feel more, um, more proactive, better cognition, better sleep, all these types of things. Totally. Yeah. They triggered a question like, cause you're, you know, you know, you look after yourself, mate, you know, you, you, you tick most of the boxes and from an, I'm then from an emotional stress, cause you still have a job. You have a very demanding role. Okay. You, you have a newborn yep. now as well, which is amazing. Yes. Yeah. At, yep. you know, how do you, from just the emotional component, deal with stress on a daily, daily, weekly, monthly basis? Yeah. Look, look, I think if I just, if I just talk about things in the past that I just pretty much thought movement, training, um, nutrition was everything. And that would correct a lot of my stresses and so forth. Um, but you know, the, the one thing I know for sure is like I was doing those things and still I wasn't dealing with stress very well. Okay. Um, and you know, it would affect my sleep. It would affect sometimes my mood from day to day. It would affect my energy systems and so forth. So really for me, you know, some of the most important elements to help me combat stress is, has really been meditation. Um, something that you've really, 
sort Not of, uh, <laughs> yeah, you've really hammered home with me and something that you've, you know, and now I'm going to start going a little bit further down the rabbit hole with uh, um, sort of that metacognition and uh, tapping into some, some slightly different elements because I'm, I'm ready for the next stage. Um, but it was something I was quite reluctant to, to, actually, to actually, embrace. Can you, can you share the story as well then to the listeners? Because when you did my pilot course for four weeks, yep. you'd have to say that was the first time you, uh, and you were committed. You know, you'd signed the document and you were like, I'm committed. Like, could you just yeah. share with everyone what happened? Yeah, look, uh, meditation really had been something that I would only do, um, you know, like, like sometimes how people would use coffee, you know, okay? like, you know, the, the, look, they feel really lousy that day. They've got poor energy. Also, I'll have, a, I'll have a cup of coffee just to pick up my energy systems. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, and so that's how I'd use meditation. Uh, I would, I would, I would have really poor energy. Uh, you know, sometimes the stress load from, from dealing with a lot of people and I love my job. Don't get me wrong. My, 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 my job's amazing. Um, but there's a huge demand there, as you, as, like you said, oh. and dealing with a lot of people with illnesses and serious health problems and so forth. Um, so, but I never, I never used it daily. Um, and when I, when I actually did, the program was let it in and started exposing myself to regular uh, meditation. Um, it actually put me into a initially a really poor state. Um, and I don't want people to, to, to be scared off by that. Um, because the one thing I know is that most of the best things in life, there's a short term pain and there's a long term gain. Uh, training is a, is a great example yeah. of that. Ice therapy is another great example of that. Um, nutrition has elements of that as well because your body's got to adapt and it's got to change. A lot of people, they, they try a particular high fat outline and there's, there's huge health benefits to doing that. They go, oh, I feel really funny and then they just stop it. Yeah, okay. But most of the time it's your body adjusting and having to uh, yeah. ad uh, adapt to it. I mean, your body has to adapt and that's the same thing with the meditation for me. So I went through a period where I, I didn't have any energy. I didn't want to go to work. I, re I didn't really want to deal with people and it's very unlike me. And um, even saying to my business partner, like I just got no, you know, I've got no motivation to be here. Um, and really it was just, it was just basically meditation was putting me into a state that probably my body needed to be in uh, most of the time. Cause I operate in, in such a high, I guess, sympathetic nervous system, uh, uh, sort of state or if you want to call it sympathetic yeah. nervous system hyperactivity all the time um, and it was just putting me into a state where um, I had to sort of shut down I had to relax um, sit more in that parasympathetic nervous system sort of realms and uh, and my body was probably you know meditation was allowing me to get probably what I did really require so there was a there was a huge adjust adjustment process there, and 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 for the listeners, it probably took about a week um, until I actually clicked into this realms where actually then it became the complete reverse. Uh, my energy systems improved, my productivity improved, and the one thing I actually said to Guy is that because I do a lot of presenting and like you know, and most of the time I'm presenting all week long, um, and that's not just doing seminars; that's actually just presenting doing a lot of mentoring with people that's mentoring in-house with our staff and mentoring outside like people have got their own facilities and naturopaths and all these types of things and doing that amount of presenting sometimes it would really take its toll on my body uh and uh and sometimes my mind and what i found with doing the the program and doing the let it in program is that my energy systems really improved and actually how i was presenting i wasn't getting uh, fatigued, I wasn't feeling taxed and so forth. So, and, and that's just one element. Um, you know, there was impro improvements in my sleep. Uh, there was actually improvements in my, my energy systems throughout the day and I actually noticed improvements in my training as well. Yeah. Uh, where sometimes, sometimes my training, because how, how much energy I was expending through work, sometimes I just didn't have the energy to, to really train hard and so forth. But that changed when I started to do regular meditation and, and so uh, forth. Is it safe to say you're still meditating? Yes. Yeah. I, well medita I, med I, yeah, I meditate every day. Um, 
when when the when the baby came, there was a couple of days where I was just a little <laughs> bit off, but uh, but uh, I made sure I'm back on track. Amazing. And, yeah. And I do regu- regular breathing and so forth. So they help with that. And heart math. I do heart math every night as well oh, just to, to help yeah. to, to control so that, that heart to brain access and put yeah. me in a better state at night and a better state when I wake up in the morning. You know, and, and thanks for sharing that, mate. And I, and I highlighted that point as well because you look after yourself. Like you do, you know, like anyone that knows you, you, you are on top of, all, you know, all aspects. And for you to still feel that and notice the, the change in the homeostasis, you know, and getting out of that sympathetic, you know, and that's why I'm pretty passionate about it because there's a lot of people out there that are not on top of the other aspects as well, but are still running from that state. Yeah. And, you yeah. know, it's, it's, yeah. Massive. And, and as and and like look, I really encourage anyone to uh, there's and there's gonna everyone has to understand there's gonna be a pain point. Yeah, of yeah. Course. There's gonna be a pain point, and it's gonna cha- cha- it's gonna challenge your belief systems, and it's gonna challenge the state that your body is used to being in. But there's also the state that your body probably wants to be in. Yeah. Okay. So, and that's, and that's, oh, I was a great example of that. Like my body was used to being in a particular state. As soon as I tried to put it in a different state, it just, there was a conflict there where the body goes, well, you're not going to function too well if you don't continue to be in this state. But the reality is once I got through that pain point, I was actually functioning in a, in a much more efficient and much more proactive state than before. Yeah, brilliant. And I have no doubt we're going to do a meditation or two in Sardinia. I actually see it in my mind's eye, like a tree, a lake with a bit of a yeah, valley. We've, got, we've yeah. got some pretty, pretty, um, pretty great ideas of, of what we're going to expose the guys to in Sardinia. Um, it's, it, it's not necessarily going to be me and guys sitting there lecturing about you oh, know, no. nutri- nutrition and uh, and these different elements. I mean, I love to talk about that sort of stuff. So of course I'm going to talk about it with people individually and all that sort of stuff. But really what we're going to expose people to is, is, you know, meditation, metacognition and, you know, breathing and, and some cold immersion in nature. And that, and that's, and that's the thing. And once again, and in a community, so taking all those elements together. And as I said, the, the, you know, the, the benefits that's going to have on people's biochemistry and their state and all that sort of stuff is going to be phenomenal. Totally, totally. And then the idea is bring them lessons back into everyday life. Now, mate, I'm, I'm, a, I'm aware of the time. So I'm going to change gears because I've got a regular, a few questions that I ask everyone on the new podcast. So, um, okay, yeah. Shoot, mate. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> all right. So the first question, what's one of your biggest failures you've had but later in life turned into a win, something you were thankful for. What springs to mind? Uh, look, I, look if, I had to, if I had to say failure, yeah, mm-hmm. um, my own health was a failure. Um, and some people might be surprised with that. Um, but you know, I basically thought that, you know, just eating well, training really hard and actually sometimes training too hard um, meant that I was healthy. Um, and actually it took my own failing health because I, I suffered um, adrenal exhaustion. Um, you know, I had serious bacterial issues. I had intestinal permeability. Um, you know, it, it, my health was, was, was really poor and it, and it took that, lesson for me to understand that i was not on the right path got it and um, let me if that hadn't happened to you would fifth element wellness exist today most likely not there you go so 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 one of, so one of the best things that that ever happened to me was also one of the worst um yeah. my, my 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 own failing health um and 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 some of those really uh, terrible things that happened to me from a from a health perspective was actually what was actually also one of the best things that happened to me. Yeah. Uh, um, like I, I feel really blessed that once again that I actually that I had like a bit of a wake up uh, that I had an enlightening moment that actually forced me to look at different realms uh, 
to look into things like blood markers, to look, to look into things like what's going on in people's digestive system. Um, and, and that was really, that was really the, the spark that I needed to, to look at many different aspects yeah. of health. And I, I just think it's a great lesson because it's like, I've been there and not with health, but with other aspects of my life. And as shit as it is when you're in it and you're like, why me? Life sucks. This is ridiculous. Blah, 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 yeah. blah. Yeah. But the, the wisdom that you gain from these things over time. It's, it, it's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. Like I, I just feel so lucky to have had such a, for me, such an amazing experience like yeah. that. Um, and it was just a big wake up call and, um, I wouldn't change a thing from that. Yeah. Um, because I, like, I wouldn't be sitting here in front of you today. We wouldn't be talking about something as amazing as Sardinia and fifth element most likely wouldn't exist. Yeah. Uh, and I wouldn't be helping people and I wouldn't be helping to change lives and so forth. So yeah. Imagine that, right? Imagine that, yeah. you know, oh. yeah. so, next question. Yes. If you could have dinner with anyone tonight, in anywhere in the world, in any time frame, like past, present, where, who would it be and why? Ooh, it's a, that's, a, that's a real tough question. Um, Somebody must pop in I mean, there. I mean, apart from saying my partner, Bianca, um, but I guess, yeah, it's, it's, it's a t- that's a tough question. Um, Look, there's so many people that I would that I would love to sit down and talk to and so forth. But actually, look, maybe maybe more recently, someone who I really resonate with, someone who I think's got a powerful message, someone who can tell me about many different aspects of life, not just nutrition, but even physiology and um, psychology and uh, and movement is actually Ido Portel. Um, you know, I mightn't have said that maybe five years ago, six okay. years ago. Um, but I, you know, I love his, his look on life. I love his, um, his enthusiasm to help people be better movers, to be better versions of themselves. Cause that's what I resonate with. That's all, that's all I want. You know, I want, I want people to be, be the best possible version that they can be of themselves. And for me, you know, people are only maybe reaching about 40% of that. Yeah. And that's the, and that's the message that, you know, really, you know, he really is sending to people. Yeah. Um, and he's just got, he's just because he's so diverse in many different fields and he's got so much knowledge in so many different fields. I think the conversation that we could have would be really phenomenal. No, no. Yeah. yeah. Um, I know you're, you're a big fan of Edo. I'll have to, I'll definitely have to look into Edo more. For sure. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he, he, yeah. He's just, uh, um, you know, there's, there's so many people who are doing great things, um, you know, for, for people in the world. And, and, and Ido Portel is, is definitely one of them. He's, he's getting people to look at movement uh, in a different perspective yeah. and actually bring it to the fore as in helping to correct health issues as well. Yeah. Yeah. Now, amazing human being. He's done so much for sure. Yeah. Mate, last yeah. question. Um, yes. What's one thing about yourself most people wouldn't know? Um, one thing they wouldn't know. Yeah. Once again, it's a it's a it's a tough question. Um, look, I probably don't talk about it much, but I'm 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 a pretty fanatical basketball fan. Yeah. Is that true? Um, yes, it's, it's very true. Um, and actually, Bianca, my partner, would tell you that um, when I've got a bit of downtime, like because most of the time I'm 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 researching, I'm doing work, and and that's my passion. Um, but when I've got a little bit of downtime, I'm actually watching basketball. Wow. Um, uh, so yeah, like I I, I love watching. Uh, it, it sort of comes down to my childhood. I used to play basketball when I was younger, and I was it was. It was the real passion of mine. I actually wanted to be a professional basketball. I'm probably a little bit too too short, but I, you know, I was reasonably quick, and that was one of my goals that I that I, I wanted to play as high a grade of basketball as possible. 
Um, and it's sort of that passion has sort of come back recently and I'm finding myself, you know, watching a lot of basketball on YouTube and so forth. You know, I don't like being on YouTube too often, but um, for me to stay in touch with basketball and so forth, yeah. I'm doing that a little bit more recently because I realized that I've got to go back to some of those things that I, I was really passionate about when I was, which, when I was younger and, and basketball was a real passion of mine. Yeah, so I found that, I found that, that that's definitely crept back in. And, and I put that down to a lot of the work that I've done with meditation and so forth, bringing some of these things that I sort of pushed to one side and bringing them back to the fore again. So, um, yeah. Awesome. I love it. I didn't even know that one, mate. There you go. (laughs) (laughs) Um, yeah. So is there anything else you'd like to add to our listeners to, to ponder on before we wrap up? To do with uh, Sardinia or everything we discussed, you know. Uh, look, look. The only thing that I really would encourage uh, the listeners to to think about is, like a lot of the things we've talked about today. Like you know, with Sardinia, like experience it. Like we're we're so lucky in this day and age. Yeah, what we have at our disposal that we can travel, that we can that we can go spend time with these uh, like um, these cultures that almost have the recipe for longevity and a good life and a happy life and so forth. And so like, I'd really encourage people to, to take that opportunity with, with, with both hands and experience it. Yeah. Um, And, and for, and for people to also understand that, um, for, for them to, to, to be the best possible version of themselves that they can be, that they have to incorporate many different aspects within their daily routine for them to help, for them to, to achieve that. Totally. That means if like people, you know, a lot of people are adopting cold therapy and, and so forth, but do you know what I find? A lot of people, they're only doing it once in a while. Well, if you only do it once in a while, all the health benefits, we're talking about the immune system and all that, you're, you're not going to get those health benefits. You have to incorporate it daily. Yeah. yeah, you have to do ice therapy maybe multiple times a week according to some of the issues that you have in your body. Breathing, you have to do that daily. Meditation, you have to do that daily. Eating well, you have to do that daily. <laughs> Movement, you have to do that daily. Yeah, like, like I just... I just can't stress that enough. Yeah. Like if you want change, you want to be the best version of yourself. You have to do these things daily because you doing it once every couple of weeks, that's an experience. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, that's what it is. It's bungee jumping. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. That's what you're doing. Yeah. Okay. So you're, you're only going to get very, very minimal return from doing things like that. For sure. Um, For sure. So that's, that's, that's the, that's the point I always try to get across to, to people. I mean, obviously like I love going pretty far down the rabbit hole, but the one thing I, I really stress to people is there's, for me, there's no monotherapy. Um, you know, I, I, I hate to break the news for people, but if you're looking for the, the magic pill or the magic bullet, I mean, it, for me, it involves many, many different aspects. You, you, you combine all those things together and guess what? Then you've got the magic pill. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. No, fair point, mate. Everything's built on good habits. There's, there's no yeah. getting around it. No getting yeah. around it, you know? Yeah. So, mate, that is coming to the end of the show. Um, I will, I will uh, suggest to everyone to come to, uh, if they're more, more interested in Sardinia, the best place to come back to is my website, guylawrence.com.au, and there's a big green button there that will say Sardinia under the, under the video. So, um, like, like I said, at this point of actually recording this, we've about half the spots are full, and we're, so there's about 12 spaces left. We've actually got about 12 people saying they come in that haven't put deposits down yet. <laughs> so yeah. as they yeah, come I in... Mean, the, the, look, the, yeah. interest is, the interest is huge. Um, you know, if people really want to try something different, I would definitely uh, advise them to not to sit on their hands, get, in, yeah. get involved. Um, because yeah, those 12 spots, they're, they're going to go pretty quick. Yeah. Um, so if you're keen, uh, yeah. act sooner rather than later when hearing this, cause it could, could well, uh, have, uh, gone, but yeah, hundred yeah. percent. 
Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Mate, I just want to acknowledge you. I want to thank you for coming on the podcast. I want to thank you for everything you do, mate. Uh, I know everything you do comes from the heart. And uh, your passion to help people is second to none, man. And, you know, you've been a big influence on me as well since we met in that ice bath a couple of years back at Wim Hof, you know. And, yeah, um, look, but it, it goes two ways, Guy. And then that's one thing I know. Uh, when you surround yourself with uh, like-minded people, it definitely goes two ways. And, you know, the, 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 you know, the things that I've told you, then I've just received that back with, yeah. uh, with, with things to do with the mind and uh, practicing, you know, uh, metacognition and all these types of things, which are, are some, sometimes they might have been, mightn't have been elements that I would have, wouldn't, have, wouldn't have incorporated till yeah. quite far down the line, yeah. unfortunately. Oh. <laughs> yeah. No so thank you as well, mate. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. And thanks for everyone tuning in today. Like I said, if you want to join myself and Dave and 12 other cool cats so far, um, and 24 in total for Sardinia, just head back to guylawrence.com.au and uh, check it up. Drop us an email. And hopefully we'll see you there joining us in September for an amazing... And there's, going to, there's going to be some pretty amazing personalities on that trip as well. Oh, so. Hands down, there's some already coming. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to be a great mix of people. So... It's, it's, going to be, it's, it's going to be a great experience. Totally, totally. Yeah. Well, thanks for your time, Dave. Appreciate it, man. And I'll see you, uh, see you soon. Thanks for having me, Guy. Thanks, buddy. Bye. See you, mate. Bye.